God bless you saints and thank you for coming again to hear this message that um, I think God has given to me to give to you. And uh, recently I made a mess uh, I made a, a message um or re a video about your 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 day and message of grace. Now in that video I wasn't um at that time I wasn't feeling too well so I had a, I had a terrible cough at the time and I actually to excuse me and forgive me for for being so um being so terrible in the video but um I, I didn't actually finish I wasn't able to finish the video so I was uh, planning to leave it for another time and maybe um put it together in some other message and so I can give to you the, the other scriptures that I had but um, I think God is trying to tell me to, to do it now and let you have all together. So um, I think it's very important that you understand your ministry and the day that you're living in. I think um, <clears throat> I think he wants you to see this and he wants you to, to really um, have a vision of, of what he's doing today, amen, in your life and in the world at large. Amen. And what is our response to everything that's happening, um, all the things uh, in the world, the, the catastrophes, the the um, the storms, the the the, the, um, the financial situation, whatever is happening in your life, he wants you to know what's happening, and he wants you to have a vision, his vision, of what you to do today and your ministry today to the world. Amen. So in in the first video, I dealt with. More of what is, what is the message of grace, giving the message of grace, His grace, to your brothers, to your sisters, letting them know that um, it's by His finished work on Calvary, it by by is His faith that He's given to you, His virtue that is given to you, His His His, um, his temperance, His patience, Amen, His godliness, His knowledge, that we are just to. Just to manifest today, we not to strive in our own effort and our own self-discipline. We basically to rely on His finished work at Calvary, and based by relying on His finished work, He is able to manifest these virtues through us. Amen. So it's a message of grace. It's an hour of grace. Um, we no honor the the. Um, he don't want you to be to remain under the requirements. Of which he put you under. Now he bring the requirements not for you to try to meet the requirements. He bring the requirements, um, the, asking you to to produce faith, ask you to to produce um, virtue, um, temperance, patience, to his standard, um, um, so that you can see your need for him. Amen. So that's the reason for the law. That's the reason for. Uh, for the prophets coming before Jesus Christ, and that's the reason today, He's brought back the full, the restoration of the of the, the, the full requirements of the Word, Amen. And it's His requirements, so we don't shun His requirements, but instead of trying to keep His requirements, the flesh always try to meet God's standards and and and, and eventually fail all the time. Amen. But God don't want you to try to meet his standard. What God wants you to do is to see Jesus Christ, the grace of God to you. When you see Jesus Christ and his finished work, that is the requirement met. Amen. All the requirements that God had was met in Jesus Christ and was paid for at the cross. So what he, what he wants you to do is to see your need for him. See your need for the Lord Jesus. See your need for His faith. See your need for His virtue. See your need for His patience, His knowledge, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, His temperance, His love. Amen. That is what He wants you to see. Amen. So um, the world is, it has gone um, trying to 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 produce. With your own effort, with your own self-discipline, see certain steps, and you be you have faith. These certain steps, and you have right, you be righteous. No, God has given us these things. He's given us His righteousness. Amen. By Him fulfilling completely and perfectly the work of salvation, He has He has received a crown of righteousness from God. Amen. Jesus Christ has received the full and all of the blessings of God. Amen is in him and he has now poured all of the blessings 
all of his righteousness into the bride, us today. Amen. And in each age, what we call to do is to manifest him in each age to the world at large so that more can come in. Amen. So more sons can come in. Amen. So this is the purpose of God. This is the purpose of God even today. Now we here to manifest his love. Now I want to show you in the scripture where it is his righteousness. This is the foundation of every believer. Your because um, you call a believer because you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's, that's, that's what you believe. Before Jesus Christ came, there was the law of requirements. When Jesus Christ came and met all the requirements and died for the sins of every man, every woman, every child, every person that ever lived and ever will live. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate price for them. He's given them a pardon so they can accept this pardon. Once anyone seen Jesus Christ as Savior, accept his pardon of forgiveness, they will be saved according to the scriptures. Amen. And this is what the whole in the whole um, this is the whole vision of Jesus Christ, the whole revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Throughout the scriptures all point to this person of Jesus that he will be the savior of the world. Amen. So here we are today, we're here to point people to the finished work of Jesus. Now I want to show you that because you believe in his finished work is where he imparts righteousness to you. Amen. He imputes righteousness to you. Impute, imputation is an accounting term. It's an old English term to say basically put on your behalf or put on your account. Amen. So basically God put on your account righteousness because simply because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe in his finished work. Amen. Because you accept his finished work, you've accepted his life into you. By you accepting his life into you, you automatically receive all of the blessings that Jesus Christ received and all of the righteousness that Jesus Christ received. Amen. But it's for you to know, bring your body, your mind in sub subjection into full obedience to this truth. Amen. To become fully conscious and aware of who you are in Christ Jesus. Is where you can, and then is when you'll be able to manifest these things naturally. Amen. Because you're relying on the finished work of Jesus Christ. So let me show you in the Bible. Let's go to Romans 3, 21. And I'm going to show you that it's His righteousness. Just to reassure your faith that you have nothing to do with it. It's all a gift of God to you. Amen. So we go to Romans 3, 21. And it goes like this. But now the righteousness of God apart from the law is manifest. That's Jesus Christ. It's talking, um, Paul here is talking to the Romans about Jesus Christ. And he's saying, now the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ was a manifestation of the righteousness of God. He says, now the righteousness of God apart from the law is made manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Amen. The same thing today, um, the same thing in this age. In every age, the, the, God's word is made manifest after the requirements has come. So God's word come in each age, faith, the requirements of faith, excuse me, the requirements of virtue, the requirements of temperance, the requirements of patience, all in every age God has given a requirement. And after the requirement comes, when men see the need for God's faith, then God is made manifest. Then you really see Jesus Christ. Then you see the revelation of Jesus, that his, how he is faithful to you, and then you grab a hold of Jesus Christ. In every age, this is what happened. So in the age of, of, of Paul, there was a need for faith, and God being the requirements of faith. And, we, and, 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 um, and, be, and when the people saw the need for faith, they saw Jesus Christ and his faithfulness to them. And that's how they were able to take a hold of his faithfulness, take a hold of Jesus. They had a revelation of Jesus Christ to them as faith. Amen? And they were able to manifest faith naturally because of Jesus Christ. And in every age, the age where he required virtue, strength, the age where he required um, patience, temperance, um, godliness, each age, each requirement was for the, the, the people in those days to see Jesus Christ as what they need and take a hold of him. See his beauty, behold his beauty, behold his glory, and you'll be transformed into the same image of which you'll be holding. Amen. 
So this here is the, Paul is telling the, the Romans here, but now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is made manifest, being <clears throat> being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. Amen. So is unto everyone this righteousness given to everyone that believe him. Amen. Once you accept the finished work, the righteousness is imparted unto you, my brothers. So praise be to God. And I want just to just to reassure your faith in Jesus Christ. Not in not in the not in the message of any age, but in Jesus Christ. I want you to see Jesus Christ, and if you see Jesus Christ, you'll be transformed into Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the word. That's the word of God. Amen. So let me show you now um, the day that we're living in and what is promised for today. Now this is crucial. What is promised for today is what is going to be made manifest today. Amen. And I want to show you the scriptures um, going back to Zechariah. The same scripture you read previously in part one. Going back to Zechariah about the, of the message of grace and about how uh, rebuking Satan of trying to bring Joshua, a type of the bride under condemnation. Here's the same Zechariah again, the prophet of God in of, um, in the scriptures reform uh, in the same um, chapter. Um, here's, here's, here's God talking to Joshua now about his ministry and what will happen in this day. The same thing happened in those days will happen in this day. And here, here's a prophecy, not only for today, for us, the Gentiles, because this is a closing time of the Gentiles. This is a dispensation where we actually born in time of the, of the Jewish dispensation. Amen. So we actually born time from the Jewish dispensation to bring in whosoever will. Amen. And so here's the prophecy from God of this day. And listen to it carefully. Hear now. O Joshua, the high priest, you and your fellows that sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. This is God talking to Joshua, the high priest, like he's talking to you today. He's going to bring forth the branch. Which branch? This is Jesus Christ. In those days, he was talking about bringing forth Jesus Christ. Now, in this day, this prophecy is for today as well. He's talking about bringing forth the branch from the root of David. The branch is Jesus Christ again. Now, he's bringing, he's, he's introducing Jesus Christ back to the Jews. Amen. This is the same prophecy for them. And it's a prophecy. We're borrowing a piece of this prophecy for us. Amen. This is a we're pouring a piece of this grace. He's given us a uh, He's given us a little piece of this grace so that we can bring whosoever will in. Amen. And here is a prophecy. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your fellows that sit before you, for they are a wondrous sign. For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. For behold, the stone that I that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone, shall be seven eyes. Amen. So just let me explain this to you. Now we saying before Joshua, he's laid a stone. This stone is speaking of Jesus Christ again. Everything in the Bible speaks of Jesus Christ. Everything reveals Jesus Christ. The ministry of Jesus Christ. The ministry of Yeshua. The ministry of a Savior. Amen. And this stone speaks of Jesus Christ. This is actually the cornerstone that will cap the, the church ages and will, in, and, and will go to the Jews. Amen. This is a stone that caps the church ages. Amen. Love. This is a stone he's talking about here. This is a branch of David. Amen. To the Jews, it's a branch of David. To us, it's like a stone. <clears throat> Amen. And behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, laid before the ministry of Jesus Christ in the ages um, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Now these eyes are, are, are basically the, the, the messengers that came to each age. In each age there was a messenger like Paul, Martin, Luther, Columbus, um, um, uh, Wesley, um, William Iron Branham. 
these are messengers and William Marbrand is a prophet of God. Amen. But I'm not here to, I'm not here to talk about these messengers. I'm just highlighting the messengers here. But what I want to show you is the ministry of Joshua, the ministry of Jesus Christ in every age. And this is the ministry of Jesus Christ today. You are part of that ministry. You are part of the ministry of Joshua today. Amen. And he's saying here, one up uh, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. So in this capstone, there's all the manifestations of God, all the seven manifestations of God, faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness. Amen? Amen? All the manifestation is, is, will be manifested in this capstone. And all will be manifested by perfect love. Perfect love, the self-sacrificial love, will be the the, the team of this manifestation God himself manifesting himself as grace to whosoever will let him come amen amen whosoever any gentile any gentile that means anyone that's not a Jew anyone that, um, that, that that is not part of the Jewish race can come in this is a, basically the final call amen I'm going to show you this just going a little bit more here um, verse 9 Behold, I will engrave its engraving, says the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Oh, praise his name. I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. Now, this land also speaks of Israel, as I, as I mentioned before, but this land also speaks of the bride, of, of the, bride the body of God. In, in, in basically, all of the Gentiles that will come in, he removed the iniquity of them in one day. Amen. Praise be to God. And this is that day, my brother. This is a day of your salvation. This is the day of grace. This is the day, the final day, uh, the, <laughs> the final closing moments of time for the salvation of whosoever will. The final ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. Going now to the Jews, he's asking that whosoever will let him come. And here's he saying here, uh, he will remove the iniquity of, of, uh, of that land in one day. Amen. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, shall you invite every man, his neighbor, under the vine and under the fig tree. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Now, let me explain this. He said, in this day, you'll invite every man, his neighbor, regardless of who he is, let him come. Whoever is close by, invite him in. Invite him, show them, and reveal to them the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Show them the finished work of Jesus Christ. If you don't have anything to say, just ask God to give you a word, one word to the person. Just tell the person how much God loves you. Amen? Ask him, do you know how much God loves you? Just simply that, just simply ask them that question. God, give God the opportunity to extend grace and mercy. Amen. Now it's not for you to convert them; it's for God to actually create a conviction in their heart and save them. But it's for you to show them grace. It's for you to show them mercy. So you should show them God love for them, and it's ultimate forgiveness. He's already paid the ultimate price for them. It's up to them just to accept it now. Amen. It's a wonderful story, and this is this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And here he's saying here, and uh, and this shows that it's, as a part of this is for our is for, for, for us the Gentiles as well, because the vine speaks of Gentiles, Amen. The fig tree speaks of the Jews, Amen. So this shows that it's part for <laughs> this is part for us as well. He is the he. He's the root and offspring of David, and we, he said, he's a vine, we are the branches. So this, brine, this vine is a, this vine speaks of who he is to us, the Gentiles. Amen? And, who, and the fig tree speaks of who he is to the Jews. Amen? So both Jews and Gentiles are, are, are given the opportunity in this day, amen, is going back to the Jews fully, in terms of full ministry to the Jews, but Right now, he's given us the opportunity as Gentiles to bring whosoever will, let him come in, your family members, whosoever. Thus, ask God to give you leadership, 
guidance and express love, he's going to take over. You just, you just go out there with faith and he's going to take over, my brothers and sisters. Just point him to a ministry. Point him to the website, own website. Um, share our, our, um, our updates and our posts or whatever you want to do. Um, but just point people to Jesus Christ. Point him to grace and his grace and he's going to bless you. So finally, I want to show you this last scripture just to confirm this to you and, and reassure you of your ministry in Jesus Christ. We're going to look at Revelation 22, 17. Amen. And this speaks, this speaks perfectly of the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. It speaks to you today. Revelation 22, 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Amen. The Spirit of God and the Bride, you today, say come. And let him that hear it, say come. And let him that thirst it, come. Amen. And whosoever will, let him take the waters of life freely. Amen. So that is your ministry, my brothers. That is a ministry of reconciliation. That is your ministry right there, 2217. It says, you and the Spirit of God is saying, come. Amen. Let him that hear these words say, come. And let him that is thirst come. And let, let one that who thirsts take the waters of life freely. Amen. Amen. Let him take hold of Jesus Christ freely. Because it's His grace towards us. Amen. So we've, we've received His grace. Now let us impart His grace without conditions, without restraint, unconditional, even sacrificing your own self. Amen. Regardless of what they've done, regardless of what they've told you before in the past, regardless of what, just extend grace and pray and ask God to have mercy on your souls and God will do the work through you. Because of your because of your intercession on their behalf, like Esther, because of your intercession on their behalf, like 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 Abraham, Amen, on behalf of Lot. These are all types of the bride, Amen. And that's who you are today. Amen. So I hope this has blessed your heart. And what I want to do now is introduce to you a new series I'll be bringing out very soon about the ministry of the bride. Amen. The ministry of the bride. Um, in terms of Abraham. So we can look at the life of Abraham and I'm going to show you in every bit of his life the ministry of the bride and what are you to do today. Amen. With the name change and everything. And I hope it's going to bless your heart. God bless you saints. And I hope to talk to you soon. Praise the name.